How was the world created? Who created us? Various creation stories have been developed by the people of many cultures and civilizations through the centuries to answer these questions. The Sumerian civilization is one of the first civilizations to create a creation myth that contains some answer to these questions. According to the Sumerians, humans and other animals were created by a group of deities known as the Anunnaki. But why did they create us? For the same reason as why we created robots? Are the Anunnaki gods really aliens from another planet who came to earth for the purpose of mining gold? In this video, we are going to learn more about the Eridu Genesis and other theories which might contain the answer to these questions. So make sure to watch it till the end. The Eridu Genesis, also known as the Sumerian Flood Story, is the earliest record of a Sumerian creation myth. It contains one of the oldest great flood stories in the world even predating the Biblical Flood story. This story has been passed on from person to person through oral tradition before being written in 1600 BCE. In the 19th century, many Western institutions funded expeditions to Mesopotamia in hopes of finding new physical evidence which would support the historicity of the Bible. But to their surprise, they discovered many cuneiform tablets which, after being deciphered, contained stories similar to the Biblical ones. But the catch here is that these cuneiform tablets predate the books of the Bible in which the corresponding stories are present. This fact has shocked many biblical scholars who have eagerly waited for the results of these expeditions to prove that the stories present in the Bible are historical in nature and are not fictional. The discovery of these cuneiform tablets changed the whole perspective of the Bible and led many people to believe that the Bible authors took inspiration from the stories of the Sumerians. Although the surviving copy of the Eridu Genesis is badly damaged with a lot of lines missing from it, we can still read and understand the context of the early flood story written in it. To fill the missing sections, scholars rely on the later work of the Akkadians and Babylonians called Atrasis, which tells the same tale. A similar great flood story also appears in the famous Epic of Gilgamesh, which is considered to be the second oldest religious text in the world. Eridu Genesis is said to have influenced the Egyptian flood story called the Book of Heavenly Cow, but this theory is still being questioned by many scholars and Egyptologists. The priest king Zayusra, also known as Otambishtam, is the hero of the Sumerian flood tales, just like Noah, the hero of the biblical flood story appearing in the Book of Genesis. Zayusra also appears in the instructions of the Surupak, a Sumerian wisdom literature where he is being advised by his father on how to act in a proper manner and uphold culture values and standards. Now that we have got a pretty good idea of what the Eridu Genesis is about, let's dive in and learn the world story. The beginning of the story is lost. It is believed to have contained the story of how the gods created humans and other things, the whole process. The surviving portion begins by recounting how the gods An, Enlil, Enki and Ninasar created the black-headed people, the Sumerians. After that, they created animals like gazelles, wild donkeys, and four-footed beasts and also set comfortable conditions for them to live and procreate. The lines, when the royal scepter was coming down from heaven, the crown and the royal throne being already drawn from heaven, let us know that the kingship was descended from heaven. Then the gods built the first cities, Eridu, Baptibira, Larak, Sipar, and Shurupak. Eridu is said to have been built before the other cities and is considered as the oldest city in the world. Each of these cities is given to separate gods for them to oversee and protect. Maybe this was the reason for the existence of patterned deities for every city. After this section, a large part of the text is lost. And when it continues, the gods have already decided to destroy the entire human race by sending a flood. To know the world reason behind it, we have to look at Atrasis and fill out the missing parts of the story. In Atrasis, it is said that the reason behind the decision was to overpopulation and noise pollution of humans. The sound was so loud that the gods couldn't even sleep properly, especially Enlil. So he tried various ways to kill mankind before deciding to send a flood. He sent a drought, a plague, a famine 
to reduce the population of human beings. But they all fail to do it, as each time, Enki, the god of wisdom and friend of humanity, tells the people what they should do to reverse Enlil's plagues, and they are able to go on with their lives as before. After the decision has been taken, the goddess Inanna and Nintu wept over the creatures and their hearts were filled with grief. But the supreme gods An and Enlil made the other gods swear an oath by their names that they would not interfere in the decision to destroy humanity. But the god Enki, in his mind, thought about various ways to save them. Then the hero Zaitsura, the priest king, enters the story. He also acted as a seer. He stood by a statue of a god day after day, asking his wishes and praying. One day, something unusual, which was not a dream, appeared before him. He saw a vision of how the gods were discussing the fate of humanity. He saw them touch their necks as a gesture to indicate that if they broke their oaths, they would allow themselves to be beheaded. Then Zaitsura heard a voice which came from the wall near him. It was the voice of Enki, the god of wisdom. As he had taken the oath not to interfere with the flood along with all the other gods, he couldn't warn Zaitsura directly. So he spoke to him through a wall. He said, Step up to the wall to my left and listen. Let me speak a word to you at the wall and may you grasp what I say. May you heed my advice. By our hand, a flood will sweep over the cities of the half bushels baskets on the country. The decision that mankind is to be destroyed has been made. A verdict, a command of the assembly, cannot be revoked. No order of hand and enlil is known to have been countermanded. Their kingship, the term, has been uprooted. They must bethink themselves. He then instructed Zaitsura to build an ark to save himself and the seed of all mankind and animals. After that, the flood came and devastated the earth. It lasted for seven days and seven nights. When the sea started to quiet and the rain stopped, the sun god Wutu came out, spreading light over heaven and earth. After seeing the sun, Zaitsura stepped up and kissed the ground before him. Then he made a sacrifice to honor the god. When Enlil found Saitsura and the other survivors on the ark, he was so angry, but then King came forward and explained himself. Zaitsura then stepped up before Han and Enlil and kissed the ground. All the anger of Han and Enlil was now gone. To reward Zaitsura for living a godly life and preserving the seed of humans and animals, the gods granted him immortality and settled him towards the east over the mountains of Dilmun, a legendary place far away on the edges of the earth. The text ends here. There is a theory that the Sumerian gods who created humans were actually aliens from another planet who came here with a specific task in mind. In the book, The Twelfth Planet, the author, Zekaria Sitchin, claimed that the Anunnaki were actually an advanced humanoid extraterrestrial species from the undiscovered planet Nibiru who came to Earth around 500,000 years ago and constructed a base of operations in order to mine gold after discovering that the planet was rich in precious metal. According to Sitchin, the Anunnaki created a hybrid set of humans by combining the species with Homo erectus via in vitro fertilization in order to create humans as a slave species of miners. Other theorists like Ronald H. Fritz claim that the pyramids all over the world were actually built by the Anunnaki, which they considered so impossible to build without highly advanced technologies. Sitchin predicted that the Anunnaki would return as soon as 2012, but guess what? They didn't and none of the world-ending events had occurred in that year, as most people believe. After 10 years, 2022 was given as the year for the return by some of the ancient astronaut theorists and other people on the internet. But it didn't happen either, and the year is going to end soon. What do you think? Will 2023 be the year in which they return and enslave humanity again? Leave a comment below and let me know. If you want to learn more about Sumerian mythology, Tap the i button and check out my playlist. It contains videos about the gods like Anne and Enlil who appeared in the story and other interesting Sumerian myths. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, tap the thumbs up icon and share this video. Hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell icon. I will see you again in a new video with a new topic to explain. Thanks for watching.